Southwestern family of companies welcomes you to the Action Catalyst. With each episode, our diverse and amazingly accomplished guests share their insights and inspirations to help us ignite our own. So let's invest attention, together, to breathe, to reflect, and refocus, and decisively defeat that voice that we call Mr. Mediocrity. Then let's enjoy moving forward to make a positive difference in our world. Johnny Quinn is a cool dude. Johnny is a, uh, he's a professional speaker and he inspires audiences all, all over the place, but he is a, a former NFL player. He played with the Buffalo Bills, the Green Bay Packers, and then he also is a United States Olympian and he competed in the 2014 uh, Winter Olympics in Sochi, which we will talk about. He uh, ended up getting to be on uh, the American Ninja Warrior and has just done some really cool things. Uh, He's also the founder of a company that is called theathletewatch.com, which helps kind of families and student athletes do research for scholarships and scouting and stuff like that. And so anyways, Johnny, thanks for being here. Thanks for having me on. Yeah. So talk to me about one of the programs that you do is about dreaming big again. And you tell the story about like going after your dreams. And in your case, you have sort of an interesting story in that your dream was to play in the NFL and then it happened, but it wasn't exactly the dream come true. You know, growing up in Texas, I played Texas high school football. So from a young age, I I knew I wanted to play in the NFL one day. But there was a problem with that because I'm only 5'11 and 7'8. So I'm, I'm not even six foot. The, the scouts wouldn't even give me the six foot. And so I knew it at, at a young age that if I'm going to play in the NFL or go after my big dream, I'm going to have to start out working some people. And so I, I found one scholarship to the University of North Texas two days before signing day. You know, I, I just got in. And I had a very fortunate college career. I left as the school's all-time leading receiver. And so my college career went very well. And so when it was time to turn pro, my family, we interviewed eight different agents and we found the agent that was right for for my family. And I, I remember when the NFL draft came, I did not get drafted. And I, I was confused because I was always told if you produce, you get rewarded, right? I mean, if you, if you make all the plays, you get rewarded. And so I had a very successful college career, but nobody wanted to draft me on draft day. And so shortly after the NFL draft, I had my first free agent contract come in from the Buffalo Bills. I'm 22 years old. I signed a three-year deal for $1.2 million. I am fired up to be in Buffalo if you're trashing <laughs> with me. You know, I've got a chance. And I remember getting to Buffalo, getting all of my NFL gear to see my name in an NFL locker room. It it was unbelievable. We get out to practice. I'm day three with the Bills running routes and snap, my hamstring goes. And I'm thinking, you've got to be kidding me. Day three into my childhood dream coming true, a a hamstring injury. And so, you know, the NFL, we, we joke around and say, hey, it stands for not for long. And boy, they had me on a flight back to Texas so quick. I was out of there. But that was the first time that somebody sat me down. They, they looked me in the eyes, crossed the table, and they said, Johnny, you're not good enough. We're not going to keep you around. We're not going to let you rehabilitate your hamstring. We do not think you can help us win. Today, we are cutting you. And when I heard those words, I I didn't know how to process that because I had a very successful high school career, very successful college career. I get to the pros and suddenly I'm not good enough. And so I I came back to Texas. My agent found a a new team the following year with the Green Bay Packers. And so I I get to Green Bay when Brett Favre retired the first time. (laughs) And I'm 23 years old. I signed a $1.4 million contract. I'm, I'm excited to be in Green Bay. Things are going good. You know, finally, I'm back on track. I get selected as off season performer of the week. We get into the preseason. I have my first 
NFL reception on Monday night football (laughs) in in historic Lambeau Field. It was incredible. And then three weeks later, they cut me and send me home. And so this, this emotional roller coaster that I'm on, I mean, I was I was on the top of my game, Monday night football, Lambeau Field, first NFL reception. Three weeks later, Johnny, you're not good enough. Today, we are cutting you. And so at this point, my agent says, Johnny, I I can't find a team in the NFL. Do you want to play in the CFL, the Canadian Football League? I mean, I didn't even know they played football in Canada at the time. And he sends me north to the Canadian Football League. I'm with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, and I make the roster. I earn a starting spot on the team. We're back. Things are going good. I'm, you know, on this little detour, but it's only a matter of time until my agent gets me, you know, back in the NFL where we're back on track. And I remember I, I scored my first professional football touchdown. And, and that feeling was remarkable. And then one week later, I blow out my knee torn ACL. I joke, you know, I'm on some random field in Canada, minus 29 degrees with a blown out knee, trying to figure out what is going on? You know, why is this so tough? This isn't the way it's supposed to go. And I I remember having this conversation with a general manager. He goes, Johnny, go back to Texas, rehabilitate your knee, Right, come back up here next year, re-earn a spot on this roster. And he goes, I believe in you. And and just to hear that, you know, this is the first time I've heard this at the professional level. It it, it took a like like a burden off my back to hear that I had somebody believing in me. And so I came back to Texas. I I rehabilitated my knee. And if you're familiar with, with ACLs, it typically takes six months, nine months, in some cases, a year recovery. I get medically cleared in five and a half months, two weeks before training camp. I mean, two weeks before I get to continue to go after this dream. And then I get a phone call from the general manager and he goes, Johnny, we are worried about your knee. We are cutting you. And so, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm grabbing all my medical documents saying, wait a second, I'm, I'm clear. I'm healthy. Wait. And so at first I was, I was angry. I was confused because six months ago, you, you said you believed in me. And now you're going back on your word and, and you haven't even seen me healthy now. You know, well, why did this guy lie to my face? And, and so I'm angry. I'm confused. And, and then it turned to a, a, a motivator. Well, you know what? I, I'm going to come back even stronger. I'm going to come back even healthier. I'm going to come back and show you that I, I can continue to play. But unfortunately, and professional football, after getting cut three times and having a blown out knee, I look like damaged goods on paper. So now I don't have an opportunity to play and go after my big dream. And, and this was an issue because, see, my identity was tied up into my career, my, my football career. And so getting cut from a football team was more than just getting cut. It was a direct assault on my identity. You know, in in Matthew chapter 7, Jesus talks about building your house on sand versus the rock. And I was building on sand. And when the storm came, everything came crashing down. And, And here's where I got a little bit confused because I would watch TV. I'd be on social media, right? I'm on Instagram. I'm on Facebook. I'm listening to the radio. And do you know what I would see? I would see everybody's Success after success, and my career has been an absolute train wreck. And so I, I'm left with nothing. So now take me to how do you go from there to the Olympics? That's right. My, my agent is telling me, Johnny, I, I can't find a team for you. Um, nobody wants to bring you in for a tryout. It looks like we're done here. And he goes, do you want to try bobsled? And, and I said, bobsled? Are, are you talking about cool runnings, the Jamaican bobsled team? I mean, that's, that's all I knew. I, I, he represented a bobsledder back in the day. He goes, yeah, Johnny, they, they look for former football players with a track and field background. I, I also ran track in college. He said, I think you'd be a good fit. As a matter of fact, 
the first person to do it was a guy by the name of Herschel Walker. Walker. And so at that point, I'm like, yeah, I mean, if Herschel did it, sign me up. How do you, how do you do this thing? And uh, really interesting start. I, I get in touch with a driver. They call them pilots, bobsled pilots at the Olympic Training Center in Lake Placid, New York. And he goes, Johnny, why don't you come out here in a couple months, push a bobsled around, see if you like it. I said, all right, but if, if my agent finds a football team, I'm going football. I'm out of here. And true story, one month before I'm supposed to go try out bobsled, I get a phone call from this driver. He goes, Johnny, one of my guys has showed up overweight. Do you want to come up now and compete in the U.S. four-man team trials? I, I said, well, when's the race? He goes, it's in two days. <laughs> I said, two days? You know, you got to be kidding me. I've never pushed a bobsled in my life. And he goes, I remember like it was yesterday. He goes, well, all you have to do is get into the sled. <laughs> and so I'm thinking, you guy, this guy's lost his mind. And, and uh, but I, I went, true story. He flies me in the night before team trials. My first time ever on ice was at the U.S. four-man team trials. And we no. took third place. No way. <laughs> It was unbelievable. Unbelievable. <laughs> now you're suddenly in the Olympics after one day. Well, it, it, it set in motion this new journey because I started this bobsled journey um, in 2010 after the 2010 Winter Olympics. And so that gave me a great start, but it was a four-year journey until they named the Olympic team in 2014 where the games were held in Sochi, Russia. What happened after, you know, this, this unbelievable experience, you know, we're talking about God opening a door. You know, one thing I struggle with is pride. I'm, I'm very type A. I'm very uh, a self-starter. I'm a motivator. And so I struggle with pride. And when bobsled came on my plate, when you grow up in Texas and don't have any snow and you think NFL, you, you can't take any credit for, for bobsled <laughs> when that came. But this, this new journey to become a united State Olympian. It allowed me to dream big again. It set in motion this new dream. I love that. I mean, it, I think people think of you, you know, make your dream come true, make your dream come true as if you only had one dream or you were only allowed to have one dream. It's such a great story. So then you make the Olympics. Can you just tell us really quick what happened in Sochi? Because you became a social media phenomenon, like literally overnight, you end up getting on Good Morning America and CNN and CBS. What happened exactly? Well, it was the days after opening ceremonies. Uh, I, I get stuck in my bathroom. I'm, I'm taking a shower. You know, we're getting ready for an interview with the Today Show later that afternoon. I get out of the shower and I, I can't get the door open, the bathroom door. And my roommate, he was still in the weight room. So nobody was in, you know, I didn't have a roommate to help me try to open the door. And so I start banging on the kind of side of the bathroom where my other two teammates were to see if they, they could hear me, like a, a distress call. And turns out, I find this out later, they thought it was construction. Uh, so they put their iPods in thinking that uh, they're going to drown out some of the construction. But I, I, um, I get stuck. I'm, I'm in there for about an hour. And in the Olympic Village, all the, the rooms, it's very similar to kind of like a college dorm where you have a, a long hallway. And so I, I get the bright idea, hey, I'm going to start banging on things in the bathroom that run parallel with the hallway to see if I can create some noise. And so I, I, I get back to the bathroom door. I break down this door. I, I get out of the bathroom and I, I take a picture of it. You know, I've got a pretty good sense of humor. And so I, I put it on social media. I'm thinking... You know, hey, maybe get a couple of funny comments, maybe some retweets. But oh my goodness, in 24 hours, it got 28,000 retweets seen by an estimated 10 million people around the world. It went crazy. Well, you did not just like break the door. I mean, you like Hulk style punched a hole in this door. It's pretty amazing. It's pretty, pretty awesome. Well, as you know, as bobsledders, we're typically bigger guys. So I had to, 
I had to make sure the hole was big enough to uh, to to get out of there. <laughs> It's so crazy. Well, I do have one more question for you, but before we take off, where where do you want people to go to connect with you, Johnny, and get plugged in with all that you're doing? They can visit my website, johnnyquenusa.com. I put together a free think guide on how to think like an Olympian. It has some of my favorite books, some of my favorite podcasts, some of my favorite blogs that I subscribe to to kind of give your audience an idea on how I think, how I prepared for the Olympics and what I do now to mentally train. And so that's for free at my website, johnnyquenusa.com. And then I'm obviously on all social media platforms and that handle for all of them is at johnnyquenusa. You've become a professional athlete really like five times. What do you think is the difference or this is what it takes to develop the kind of mental toughness to compete at the professional level? What, are, what do you think you would boil that down to? Well, we learned this at such a young age, and I think this is true across the board. I, I remember hearing this as a youngster. It, it's, it's a very simple concept. Never give up. And so I think that was probably the biggest takeaway as I moved from professional football to Olympic bobsledding is carrying that attitude, this never give up attitude. Awesome. Well, Johnny, thank you so much for being with us and we wish you all the best. Thanks for having me on. If you enjoy this podcast, please make sure to subscribe and to stay updated on everything that the Action Catalyst is up to. Make sure to follow us on Facebook and Instagram at Action Catalyst Podcast and on Twitter at Catalyst underscore Action. And thanks for listening.